Welcome to Engineering Influence Podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies, sponsored by HDR. We are coming to you from our fall conference taking place at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's a beautiful day today in Colorado. It's, it's a little chilly out, um, and I'm pleased to be joined by Brandon Claiborne, the CEO of Meshek Engineering. Brandon, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Brandon, you are the Small Firm Coalition Chair. And, you know, can you really just let's talk? I'm going to set the table here for coalitions just a little bit before we kind of dive into it. And just so our listeners are aware, coalitions are organized by practice area and firm size. So being the chair of the small firm coalition, is there uh, how what are the regulations for fit? And, like what, what does a small firm mean? Right. Let's, if you can define that. As far as the coalition goes, it's 50 ish. Uh, yeah, sure, okay. Generally speaking, we like to keep uh, keep it for to firms that are under 50, but sometimes you have firms that have outgrown that size that still have the same issues that small firms do and they just feel like where, where they belong. So there's no hard and fast cap. Uh, we kind of welcome anyone who, who wants to deal with the issues that the small firms deal with on a day to day basis. Right, right. Okay, so you know, I'm aware that the small firm CEO roundtable, it's one of the, the most widely attended sessions at the conference. Typically around 75 attendees make it out to that. Uh, that roundtable, I believe that happened yesterday. And can you talk about any trends or questions you had in that session that, you know, it was discussed? We kind of have an idea of what's happening within the small firm coalition. Yeah, yesterday, the, the first topic, the most popular topic that everyone wanted to discuss was ideas for attracting and retaining talent. Ah, yeah. uh, that's that's not a unique problem to small firms, but uh, small firms have special challenges. We don't always have uh, the marketing and HR staff uh, to help us have some a big program to go out and recruit and maintain talent. So it's oftentimes in the real small firms, it may be the principal and, and the shareholders that are doing uh, many other jobs at the firm that are also responsible for trying to find talent. And so there's some definitely some unique uh, skills there. And one of the things that's great about the Small Firms Coalition is people are willing to share. And uh, here's some ideas that we tried and the things that might work. We've had some firms who said they've started an internship program with high school students wow. uh, to try to encourage them to go into engineering and offering to help pay for their college uh, to, as a way to try to recruit them. You're really playing the long game, not just trying to steal from one another uh, and, and just win in the short game. So it's really exciting to hear things like that. No, that's great. That's great. Um, so let's talk about strategic goal. What's what's happening with the Small Firms Council maybe over the next three years? Um, you know, well, the, is there a way we can kind of break it down and talk about those goals? I know that there's, um, there's a big focus there being recognized as a leader in business practices just to assure that small firm issues are the forefront really of our advocacy efforts um, to ensure that engage and diverse membership participating in the coalition. Yeah, first and foremost, uh, the coalitions, we had a strategic planning retreat for all of the coalitions earlier this year, and and the goals were set uh, more for the coalitions as a whole, and then each of the individual coalitions would develop strategies to help meet those goals together. And certainly, uh, being recognized as a leader in our business practices within our practice area, that may sound like it doesn't apply to the small firms coalition. Many of the other coalitions spe uh, specify maybe in structural, right. uh, geotechnical, etc. But if you think about small firms as being a practice in and of themselves, no matter what your area of specialty may be, um, you do have a certain set of problems that that apply to small firms. And, it's, and you know, it's even different if you're a 10-person firm or a two-person firm than it is a 30- or 40-person firm. Uh, but a lot of those folks, uh, they come in and, and they get advice and they network and they meet people and they learn some things that they can take back and apply. Uh, and then maybe five years, 10 years down the road, they've grown and it's time to start that process over again. And, and there's a different group of people that you need to engage with and meet. And that that's the beautiful thing about the Small Firms Coalition is, is you do have a range uh, of, of diversity and size, even within the small firms. Uh, you can always find someone to help out with the problems you're having. Right. Oh, that's great to hear because you know, as your firm gets bigger, you, like you said, you really need to help those smaller firms get to where you are because you've, you've lived it, you've been there. So that experience really counts. Um, so over the next three years, where do you really see Small Firms Coalition going? Yeah. So one of the things that, that our big goals is to try to um, increase our membership um, and make sure people are aware. I'm not sure. Sometimes we get lost in, in ACEC as a whole. Uh, right. That, For example, the small firm roundtable. I'm not sure a lot of attendees, uh, I think over half that were attending yesterday were first time attendees. Wow. 
I don't think they knew the difference between the small firm coalition and the small firm roundtable. You know, the the differentiation that the, the, the organization, the conference was putting on the roundtable and the small firm coalition was moderating it. Okay. And that we have an executive committee uh, made up of, of small firm members that meet throughout the year uh, to try to work on issues important uh, to small firms and making sure that we're reaching out and, and having an educational opportunities, making helping ACEC provide those educational opportunities that are specific to small firms. We try to address that through our winter meeting that we have and other webinars throughout the year that we try to tailor specifically for small firms. So those are some of the ways we're going to try to help meet the goals that are out there in front of us. So I, you think about the value of joining small firms, but you've really just gone through all the reasons to, to, to join, right? If, if you're not a small firm member and you are looking for guidance or advice or networking, this seems to be the place for a smaller firm, right? I agree 100%. The, the first conference I attended was a fall conference about seven or eight years ago. And uh, I just happened to get in in time early enough on that Sunday to make it to a f- small firm CEO roundtable. And I really didn't know what to expect. And it turned out to be one of the most valuable things that I've gained. Uh, mm-hmm. As uh, At the time, I was a shareholder in the firm. Uh, I was one of the principals but, and managing one of the departments. And little did I know uh, a few years later, I'd become CEO of the firm and how valuable those relationships I built uh, through the ACC small firm coalition would be. Right. Yeah. No, that's a great story. And really the power of, you know, the, the network you can build at these coalition meetings, uh, joining a coalition, of course. Um, you know, I know there's other education sessions that we host in the winter geared towards small firms and challenges because, you know, you mentioned that the small the challenges are, are unique, right? To small firms, you're facing different issues that larger firms are probably facing um, at that education session. At, you know, at, there's a lot of value that comes out of that, right? I, right. So <laughs> I think maybe you just talked about that, but is there anything else you want to add about that ed session, that, that annual ed session? Is it similar to like the, the round tables that just happened today? Or well, I'm sorry. That's okay. In the in the winter meeting, we typically have a trainer, a speaker, or trainer come in and, and spend a, a couple of days intensively focusing on a topic. So maybe that's HR, uh, maybe it's accounting, maybe it's business development, uh, maybe it's uh, IT issues. You know, if you think about uh, larger firms, that they have they have a budget and they have a staff for IT. Small firms typically have neither, uh, but yet they they have growing problems with uh, how how are we going to work in the cloud? How are, how are we going to handle remote workers as small firms? How do we have the IT infrastructure to help that. So it really is what kind of feedback do we get from the members and not just the members of the coalition, but the members of ACEC that attend the small firm roundtable, the input from them as well as to what would be valuable. And then we try to go and, and develop those courses or find those people who can help us teach those. Another thing we did last year, uh, ACEC had a webinar on cybersecurity and we didn't really think, uh, we felt like it didn't address small firms issues. And we asked the the, the trainers, the speakers, if they could adapt that more specif- uh, with more specificity towards the issues that small firms face and actions they can take towards that. And they did, and they redid that. and we. And ACC rolled out a new webinar that was geared just for small firms. They also developed a project management class, worked with PSMJ to develop a separate class just for managing small projects. Yeah. You know, the, the big uh, full on PSMJ PM class, which uh, ACC has partnered with them many times to provide that class. Uh, it doesn't really apply. Uh, you, you can spend all of your budget just trying to get organized for project management and the, and the project's already over. So, right, right. so those are a couple of recent examples that, that the coalition has been able to help push forward. Uh, I, I think I heard yesterday uh, some of the updated statistics from you guys work on updating your database that 86 percent of the firms in ACEC are 100 employees or under. And uh, so we know there's a, a need out there. I mean, there's a lot of people that, that depend on ACEC for information, training to help grow their business. And it's just exciting to be a part of it. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like what you mentioned, the almost a feedback loop, right, where you get feedback and then you're tailoring everything to these small firms. And then you mentioned that 86 percent are to qualify for the small firms. You know, I, I'm seeing here the fee for the small firms uh, council is $250. It's a firm-based membership. And what does that mean? I believe that means everyone in the firm gets access to the coalition. That's right. So uh, if you're a member of uh, the Business Insurance Trust, they will reimburse you up to $250 for joining a coalition. So that's the cost of joining the small firm coalition. So in essence, your your cost to join is zero. Um, and so we would encourage anyone who wants to join any coalition, but especially the small firm coalition, if they're in the Business Insurance Trust, it's kind of a no-brainer to do so. And you're correct that the firm joins, uh, not 
just an individual. So you don't, if you want three people to participate right. in some of the activities that we do, it's, it's, there's not an extra membership for each one. Um, your firm has that membership and everyone in your firm has access to our resources. So just to clarify, so if you are a member, you get access to all the resources that you offer at that cost. And anyone in the firm can go in and say, hey, I need help with this, kind of seek out what they're looking for. And Yeah, so some of the coalitions, if when they're more specific to a practice area, yeah. structural, for example, they develop white papers and have a whole library of resources that they make available to coalition members. And we don't have as many of those in the small firms. Uh, we, we deal more in, 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 in training, uh, more right. in-person training than we do because it's not specific to practice area. But the same right. concept applies. And that whether uh, it, whatever part of what we're doing as a coalition you have access to, and that includes becoming active in the executive committee. Uh, we, we're always looking for more people to be involved to help us learn and grow as a group. Right. I mean, leadership opportunities, especially when we talk about workforce and in, in encouraging your younger uh you yeah. with less experience to get that experience and kind of climb the ladder as well. And so Brandon, is there anything else we should talk about? Is there anything that we're missing here that our listeners would be helpful for them to hear? We covered a lot. We covered a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did. You know, ACEC, one thing that I didn't state that that I like to describe the small firm coalition is a lot of us joined ACEC for advocacy reasons. That there is no one looking out for our business interests in this industry like ACEC does. And if you within AECEC, then the small firms coalition plays that same advocacy role within ACEC for small firms. So it's our job to make sure that that our voices are being heard within ACEC. So it doesn't get drowned out by the larger firms uh, or just by the organization organization as whole, taking on larger issues. If there are issues that are specific to small firms, that we, we have opportunities to engage through various committees that we are represented on, et cetera. And there's another opportunity for some of those leadership positions. So you can get involved in some of the other committees as well and representing the small firms coalition. Uh, we have a, a member on the, the DEIB committee. Uh, I'll be attending the, the GAC committee later uh, today or tomorrow. I can't remember which, but uh, those are all good opportunities. But that small firm coalition, it's just an advocate advocacy position within ACEC for small firms. And that's that's really important. Okay. Well, Brandon, you know, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I think it was a fantastic uh, conversation. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks and for it, having uh, me, Chris. Yeah, thank you. And this has been another episode of Engineering Influence Podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. We'll catch you next time.